Welcome to your monthly update from Covidence UK. Uh, my name's Adrian Martineau. I'm the Chief Investigator based at Queen Mary University of London. And with us today is Julia Vivaldi, the lead statistician on the study. And Julia's going to tell us about the results of her latest analyses on COVID-19 and sleep. Julia. Thank you. So previously, we have explored whether having poor sleep quality before a SARS-CoV-2 infection can increase your risk of long COVID. In today's webinar, we're going to look at the effect in the other direction and see whether sleep changes after a SARS-CoV-2 infection. As we've mentioned before, the relationship between sleep and COVID-19 appears to be bidirectional. In one direction, your sleep quality before infection can affect how you respond to a SARS-CoV-2 infection. In previous COVID analyses, we have shown that having very poor quality sleep can nearly double your risk of developing long COVID. In the other direction, having a SARS-CoV-2 infection may affect your sleep. And this may be due to long COVID, which can present with sleep problems such as difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep and excessive daytime sleepiness. However, analysis of sleep changes after SARS-CoV-2 infection is complicated by the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic affected the sleep of many people, regardless of whether or not they were infected. The phenomenon was so widespread that it was given the name coronasomnia. And many different things contributed to this phenomenon. Importantly, not everyone experienced worse sleep. For some people, changes to employment or working patterns meant that they were able to sleep more than they usually did. Therefore, it's important to be able to account for how sleep may have changed more generally at different points of the pandemic. We therefore looked at all Covidence UK participants who had data on pre-infection sleep quality and sleep problems and explored how their sleep changed up to a year after infection. The only sleep measure we consistently had for everyone in the cohort was sleep duration, so that was the focus of our analysis. We classified every observation according to whether it was before a SARS-CoV-2 infection or after. To ensure we had a good representation of sleep across the whole pandemic, we also included people who never reported a SARS-CoV-2 infection. We then adjusted for various factors that we believed may affect sleep, such as age, general health and working status, among others. And we explored whether changes in sleep were affected by the infection severity and how sleep differed among people with long COVID. And this is what we found. In this picture, the red dashed line indicates pre-infection sleep, and we're looking at whether sleep duration increases or decreases in hours at different times after infection. The time points that we looked at are along the bottom. And what we see is that in that first month after infection, sleep duration increases. The amount that increases depends on the severity of your infection. People who reported being very unwell had the highest increase, sleeping an average of 12 minutes longer per night. However, after that first month, sleep largely returns to pre-infection levels. When looking at changes according to long COVID status, we divided our observations into three groups. Those who reported long COVID without sleep problems, those who reported long COVID with sleep problems, and those who did not report long COVID. You'll see we have a few reports of long COVID within the first month after infection, but by the definition of long COVID, these will all have been at least 28 days after the infection date. As you can see from the confidence intervals, we did not have many reports of sleep problems overall, which makes it hard to pinpoint the effects with precision. However, we can see that people who reported long COVID and sleep problems saw a decrease in sleep duration in the first six months after their infection. By contrast, people who reported long COVID without sleep problems had a slight increase in sleep duration over the same period. This could reflect different long COVID phenotypes. For example, people struggling with fatigue in long COVID may have found themselves needing more sleep overall. Again, sleep duration seems to return to pre-infection levels over time. In conclusion, we saw a small increase in sleep duration in the first month after infection, but sleep duration largely seemed to return to the normal after that point. We saw greater fluctuations in sleep duration in people who report long COVID. 
with increases in people who report long COVID without sleep problems and decreases in those who report long COVID with sleep problems. Our findings suggest that these changes to sleep duration may resolve within a year, but our numbers were small. Importantly, we are looking at one specific element of sleep. Sleep is multidimensional, and there may be other elements that experience greater or longer lasting effects after infection. The next steps will be to look at whether there is a new onset of sleep problems after SARS-CoV-2 infection, and whether these problems resolve over time. We may also want to see whether similar changes in sleep duration are observed after a non-COVID-19 acute respiratory infection. Thank you very much, Julia, for that extremely clear presentation and really seems clear to me that the relationship between COVID-19 and sleep is very much a two-way street uh, and hopefully to all of you watching at home who've been completing our questionnaires for so long you can now uh, start to understand why we've been asking uh, these questions in particular and I think what the findings really illustrate is again the importance of having such detailed repeated information that precedes the uh, episode of COVID-19 as well as follows it, which is what, what really what makes the Covidence UK data set uh, quite unique and so valuable. So on that note, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone once again for all the questionnaires that you've continued to fill in over the year. I wish you all a great holiday and look forward to seeing you in January. From all of us here at Covidence UK, goodbye. <laughs>